Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today we are going through and breaking down the new top 10 best meta loadouts you want to be running in Warzone Season 5. Of course, the Season 5 update ended up going through and actually adjusting a bunch of different weapons with various different buffs and nerfs. We got a couple of new weapons as well, so there is a lot to discuss here today. First things first, I do want to start with perks and equipment because it's going to be the same on pretty much all the loadouts here today. I've kind of been going back and forth with two different perk packages as of late. The first, I'll go ahead and hide the face cam here, consists of Mountaineer, Double Time, Tempered, and Flex. The second consists of Mountaineer, Double Time, quick fix and flex and truly it's just a matter of preference i find a lot of success with each of these perk packages quick fix obviously allows you to do regen way way faster whereas the tempered allows you to just play it up faster so you can get back into a gunfight it's really a matter of preference i think there are pros to each of these and there's not really cons to either of them but that's sort of what i've been messing around with as of late and then for equipment throwing knives and smokes is still my go-to and has been for quite some time but that out of the way we can focus on just weapons for the remainder of this video this first loadout, a banger. We've got the SVA 545, which was actually buffed. It's better than ever. And then the Super E, which caught a slight movement nerf, but it's still ridiculously good. Now, this SVA loadout is built around the Hyper Burst, which is semi-auto, of course. So uh, we are just focusing on that. It's got no recoil whatsoever. Really, all we care about is range and velocity. That's why we're using the Sonic Suppressor, better velocity and better range. It's almost like I planned this. Uh, we've got the precision barrel, better velocity, better range. The control benefits don't matter, but it's nice to have if you ever flip into full auto or whatever. It's still going to be a really easy weapon to use. High grain ammo is better velocity and better range. 1100 velo means your hit scan range is going to be perfect. You're going to have a hit scan range in pretty much every realistic fight you're taking, and that's the most optimal scenario for sure. We got the 60 round extended mag, and then the 2.5 times eagle eye optic. Pretty basic there, but yeah, this SVA loadout is absolutely frying. And then for the super, not a ton here has changed with the exception of really one thing. Thing. yes they nerfed the movement this build is actually almost built as like a pre-nerf uh you know counter in a sense this is going to be still one of the fastest options in the game especially for strafe that's what this uh you know build is based around we've got the zulu barrel which helps out with uh obviously strafe speed we've got jack cutthroat on here which helps out with strafe speed the basic 40 round extended mag and then high grain just to extend out that range and that velocity some here's where things can get actually really cool though is that with this update dr6 hand stop still works you're getting five percent to strafe nine percent to ads some decent movement but if you actually go through and go all the way to the end of your list if you haven't checked this already there is a brand new under barrel now, now, I personally have not unlocked it fully yet because it requires eight daily tasks to do. And I've been playing a lot, but I had to do other daily tasks for some other attachments we'll talk about here. But this is doing 5% to your strafe, some decent movement, a little bit to your sprint to fire, but it also helps out with horizontal control with virtually no cons there. So if you go through and you do eight daily challenges to unlock the paracord grip, this is now a great alternative to some close range builds and some long range builds, especially ones that you want more uh, control benefits on. Now, yes, it's not doing as much for your general movement as DR6 would be doing. Of course, DR6 does a little bit extra for your crouch movement speed and whatnot, and a little bit for your ADS, but that's a really solid alternative. So Paracord is one that we're going to be plugging in in a lot of different builds here that would be a very viable way to, uh, you know, go about and build things. Hey, everyone, real quick, wanted to give a huge thank you to Thrustmaster for sponsoring today's video. With the launch of Season 5, Thrustmaster and I are giving away one of their eSwap X2 controllers, which is the controller that I've been using for some time now, and I absolutely love this thing. In case you're unfamiliar, this thing is the ultimate customizable controller. It's got hot swap technology, which allows you to swap the overall layout of the controller whenever you want. It also has tack switch buttons, which basically all feel like a mouse click. So you've got the fastest response time in game for all of your inputs. And the next gen mini sticks have more precision and feel smoother than any thumbsticks I've ever used. So if you want to enter the giveaway and have a chance to win one of these controllers for yourself, be sure to check out the link down in the description below and sign up to enter. And once again, a huge thank you to Thrustmaster for sponsoring today's video. Next up here, we got a super reliable sniper setup. It's the Car 98K, which wasn't adjusted at all in season five. So it's still phenomenal. And then also the aftermarket part on the Horus, the scimitar kit. This thing has great range for a sub. It's super accurate and agile at the same time. So it's checking all the right boxes there. My car setup personally is really not changing all that much. We still just care about velocity in our damage range here so a 75 meter one shot with everything stacking a 925 velocity so sonic suppressor is going to build towards that the 762 long barrels also going to build towards that high grain rounds will build towards that you get the best one shot range possible and the best velocity possible out of that you can go for whatever optic you're comfortable with i like the antlers as7 but definitely just preference based there if you like a certain optic more than a different one go for whatever you're the most comfortable with then i also go for no stock on here snappy ads it's nice and aggressive helps out a ton 
the general movement speed so i really do enjoy the feel of that and the scimitar is a perfect balance to this so obviously it's going to extend out that damage range help out some with some control there great sniper support smg and i also really love the iron sights i think they're super clean so i go for an iron sight build here ripper light stock for some better movement better strafe speed so you're still nice and aggressive here high grain rounds for an even better damage range on here better velo for that hit scan range too dr6 hand stop but if you want to use paracord that would also be a great alternative in this case as well so you could go through you could unlock that and that'd be really good in this case and then also zem 35 just some better control minimal cons to your ads and bullet velocity as well so a couple of different ways you could build this out but the scimitar is a really good sniper support option another sniper loadout this one may be a bit more standard obviously the infinite one shot range with the cat amr and i pair this with the mcw conversion arguably the best close range gun in the entire game and by far the best sniper support in the game so cat setup all we care about here is having the best velocity i go for the uh nightfall suppressor here i also go for the zang 34 barrel and then high velocity in this case the damage range con does not matter since this one shots everywhere and we get a 941 velo that's pretty consistent for a lot of gunfights you won't have to stress too much about bullet lead or bullet drop I also got the TAC pad stock on here. This helps out with ADS speed. This thing is abysmally heavy and abysmally slow. So any help we can get on the ADS is definitely appreciated. And then I go for the quick bolt. Just get your shots off faster back to back to back, which is always very nice too. And then for our MCW conversion kit here, Sonic Suppressor is a really good option. Again, extending out that range and that velocity. Some this thing could definitely use some velocity help. I think DR6 hand stop here is viable. I also would definitely say that Paracord would be very viable here too. So if you have that available, certainly worth throwing that on and testing and seeing how that feels. We got the 40 round Xenomag on here. Then I like the Elo site, the MK3 reflector. Nidar would work here. So would Slate, whatever you're comfortable with there, feel free to rock that. And of course the Raven kit on here for the full on conversion kit. This thing just absolutely free rise up close it's unreal after that we've got the Holger 556 a super reliable rifle and we paired this with the base FJX Horus which is still very good it caught a slight nerf to some of its ranges and its sprint to fire but overall still a phenomenal SMG as far as the Holger goes same setup that we've been rocking however you can actually update your spirit fire suppressor to the quartermaster suppressor we talked about this the other day if you want to this will help out some with some control it's not going to do anything for your velo or your range though so that's just a matter of preference on what weapons do you feel you need to use this if it's a heavy recoil option this could be really good if it's a weapon that's relatively easy then you could use spirit fire in this case i think the holger is one of the easier rifles or one of the easier long range options in the game so i stick with spirit fire i think that added velocity and range is really beneficial but quartermaster is certainly a good option now for sure cryo six match barrel on here better range velocity and control high grain rounds better range better velocity so that's why we get that 983 and that 53 meter effective damage range 40 round xenomag works on this fire rate it's not crazy but it gets the job done then i like the glassless optic in this case too better firing game stability clean little blue dot there not doing too much for your ads speed on the con really reliable really solid rifle it wasn't nerfed wasn't buffed it's just as consistent and as good as it was back in season four reloaded then the base horus setup here pretty straightforward all things considered i got the zem 35 on here better control minimal cons to ads and velocity sin 9 long barrel for better uh, range velocity and control gets you out to basically a 10 meter damage range back to where the base gun was before the nerf here so still going to be feeling just like it was pre-update if you were running this build you're missing a couple of meters of damage range but that's not the end of the world right we also got the 60 round xenomag on there nidar i'm not really a fan of the base optic here then ripper light on here as well for the better movement speed just like over on the scimitar kit horus despite the nerf still feeling very strong and by the way as we are breaking down all the weapons all the loadouts here today if you are new to the channel every single day i got you covered with all things going on in call of duty news updates patch notes meta breakdowns it's all right here so feel free to hit the subscribe button if you want to stay up to date and if you are enjoying the video a like rating is always really appreciated as well next up here we've got a combo of our two new weapons both of which are phenomenal the stg close to mid-range even some of the early long range depending on your attachments crazy ttk it does drop off some over range but it's also deadly accurate so your realistic ttk is still going to be very good and then uh you pair this with the uh static hv this thing's a beast up close as well so you really got all ranges covered here for the stg i am rocking the quartermaster it's like a no recoil build here which is super super fun to use and i like that you compare the quartermaster with something like high grain and you're basically getting it is two for one attachments but you're negating all the recoil cons of high grain and you're still getting great damage range great velocity out of this too so you have a 54 meter effective damage range 
that's incredibly good for a rifle for resurgence or even for aggressive big map gameplay you're going to be just fine here uh the c70 long barrel is going to help out more with that range and that velocity as well your hit scan range is phenomenal we're going iron sight so i go for the combo stock just better control some better firing aim stability and then of course the 50 round extended pretty basic there but yeah this thing is also uh just a great rifle here and then you pair this with a static hv this has all your close range covered phenomenal ttk similar to the wasp 9 but just with way better range right you're a little bit limited on attachments it's kind of weird how they've gone through and adjusted and uh you know made some available to this but zem 35 compensator is going to be a great choice dr6 hand stop or again using the paracord under barrel would be very good here depending on how much control or uh, how many benefits there you are valuing in your personal gameplay but either or there no wrong answer we got the long barrel for better range better velocity here that's going to help out make this thing even more effective 20 meter damage range on an smg for the fastest ttk is pretty crazy i go for the kimura laser better ads and sprint to fire and then the uh spry 34 light stock which is just general better movement and no significant cons to your recoil or anything no stock the more i played around with i've discovered i'm much better with the light stock on there so i stick with that and this thing just fries next up another very fun loadout here post update the battle 27 which got a handful of buffs it's now more accurate than ever and i paired this with the wasp 9 still a very solid smg it caught a slight damage nerf but nothing too severe the battle 27 though is like a night and day difference before it was such a mid weapon not that fun to use just because its control was so awkward the control is way better now especially with this setup on here i go for the glassless optic i think this is a really reliable mid uh, long range choice i got the 60 round extended mag on here so you don't really have to worry ever about running out out of ammo Bruin heavy supports an option here but again paracord would also work here too it's nice that this is available on so many guns so uh obviously getting some better movement but also a little bit of horizontal control not as much gun kick but you know it's just a matter of again which feels more consistent to you try out both of them and see which one works there we got the h3 barrel on here better range better velocity and then lastly that quartermaster suppressor keeping us off the map but then doing even more for our control so this thing is more laser beam like than ever before and i love that if you're hitting shots in that faster fire rate mode it goes crazy and then the wasp 9 not really all that much changing with this thing it's still a very reliable smg as i mentioned zem 35 compensator on here the r6 hand stop works as would the paracord yet again so you could go either or there high grain rounds for the better range better velocity that's a decent velo range for hit scan and a really good effective damage range as well we got the 50 round extended mag and then i don't love the irons here so i go for the mk3 reflector sight and i'm pretty accurate with that again for optics always preference based though following that we've got another super easy very reliable comp combination we got the base bp50 rifle and then the striker uh secondary here so low recoil smg low recoil rifle each of these have crazy fast ttks as well i'm surprised the bp50 has been this good for this long but as you guys know this is a setup that really hasn't changed all that much i'm running cassis break right now but really there's no reason not to run quartermaster if you're okay with a slightly slower sprint to fire that's really the only main difference here cast this break ads con is the same but you're getting more recoil out of quartermaster so really no sense in not upgrading to that if you're using cast this break on anything lower nine heavy barrel better range velocity and control dr6 hand stop works here paracord under barrel would work here too so you got some choices for sure you could also you know always swap that out for an optic as well if you're not a big fan of the irons but i love these irons personally 45 round extended mag very basic and then also the moat 40 stock better movement and better control so a nice little two for one there for sure setup really hasn't changed all that much outside of quartermaster it's still frying it's still flying striker setup here also the most optimized for the close range we got these m35 on here dr6 hand stop or of course paracord the striker recon long barrel is actually more efficient at getting you better range and better velocity than high grain is so of course you want to run that i got the light stock on here for some slightly uh better movement nothing too crazy but it's a little bit better then you could run the 48 round or the 60 round extended mag on there not really a wrong choice there one's going to be a little bit slower but really not a huge deal whatsoever so striker is still a top smg option for sure loadout number eight might be one of my new favorites we got the buffed eradicator which is so so good right now and then also the bp50 conversion which is crazy good up close one of the faster ttks there so i love this iron sight tack eradicator build we've got the quartermaster suppressor you could also go spirit fire here if you're comfortable with how easy this gun is obviously getting better uh, velocity and better range is pretty clutch too so either or would work there we got the uh, conquer 70 long barrel better range better velocity 56 meter effective damage range is crazy 1200 velocity is also crazy we're pairing that with bruin heavy you could in theory i guess also use the paracord here too uh it's not again not going to do as much for your recoil but you're getting some better movement so that would actually be a very viable choice high grain of course to stack on top of that range and that velocity and then the core stock just for some straight up better control 
This thing's a laser beam and it has a phenomenal TTK. I love the Eradicator right now. Then I go for the BP-50 conversion, Zem-35. We get the high grain on there to extend that damage range out some for that crazy fast TTK. Kimura laser for the better ADS and sprint to fire. I also got the trust for grip tape straight up for better control. And obviously we've got the Revenger kit on there too. This thing just melts. Loadout number nine is another pretty crazy TTK one, the MTZ556, which I actually caught a buff. And then I go for the Lockman Shroud conversion kit built for tax stance. This thing's TTK is crazy, but it's an MW2 sub, so its handling just feels like trash. So you flip it into tax stance and you're pretty much good. This is a deadly accurate tax stance build here. Everything we're using is pretty much focused on that tax stance spread. The Dark Star barrel on here, the Bruin Bash at an angled grip gives us a crazy tax stance spread stat. We got the Verdant Hook laser better tax stance. I do go for the basic 50 run and the Maggie, of course, want to be running that. And then the Jack Decimator kit too, obviously, for the better TTK on the shroud. A unique setup for sure, but boy, does it work if you know what you're doing with it. And the MTZ, like I said, got buffed, so this setup is better than ever right now. Cast this break, you can go ahead and upgrade to the Quartermaster Suppressor. Clinch Pro Barrel, better range, better velocity, up over a 1,000 for the Velo. Great hit scan range, great effective damage range as well. High grain on there to, of course, stack into that Velo and effective damage range. 50 round Xenomag, then the Glassless Optic feels great, but as always, go for whatever one you are the most comfortable with for that. And then lastly here, I've got the Holger 26. I paired this with the same Super he set up from back at the start of the video, so we don't have to rehash that again. But Holger 26, caught a slight nerf, still a phenomenal LMG. It's deadly accurate, especially this build. It is a laser beam. And you could get even more laser beam like if you wanted to use the Quartermaster Suppressor. Personally, I do value the velocity a little bit more from Spirit Fire in this case, just because I am using Bruin Heavy. I am uh, not using High Grain in this case. So if I can get a little bit better Velo, that's going to be pretty essential there. Factory Barrel better velo range and control 2.5 times eagle eye then the ascent lord stock as well for some better control so as long as you're hitting you know upper body shots this thing's still going to have a phenomenal ttk uh the slight nerf to it is noticeable but it's not the end of the world by any means and that being said those are the new top 10 best loadouts to be running here in warzone season 5 that's going to wrap things up if you enjoyed the video be sure to drop a like and on your way out hit that subscribe button turn on those post notifications to guarantee you are always up to date with everything going on in cod but once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy. Have an awesome rest of your day. And I'll catch you later. Peace out.